Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have a definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine 2x over 2 plus cosine x dx. Now, I'm going to solve this integral using a substitution that I made a video on a few days ago. Namely, it's the substitution where you let t equal tangent of x over 2. And I know there aren't any tangents in the integrand, but that doesn't matter. We can still use this substitution. And if you missed the video, I'll link it here. So just click in the top right corner and it's also in the description. I solved a few other integrals using this substitution and it's credited to a German mathematician. So if you need some context, check out the other videos. But basically when we make this substitution, then sine of x is equal to 2t over 1 plus t squared. Cosine of x is equal to 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And our differential dx is equal to 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. So since I want to solve this integral using this substitution here, right away I notice, oop, time to use our double angle identity. So I can rewrite sine 2x in terms of just sine x and cosine x. And then the other thing I need to do straight away is change my limits of integration because currently those limits are limits for x and I need to change them so that they're limits for t. So let me do that first. So t of 0 would be tangent of 0 over 2. That's still tangent of 0, which is 0. And then t of pi over 2, that's tangent of pi over 2 over 2, which is tangent of pi over 4, right? Yes, which is 1. Oh, how lovely. Great. And then let me just remind you that sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x, okay? So we can rewrite everything now, all in terms of t. Here we go. Do you remember the integrand? Because I'm going to scroll down and you won't be able to see it. Are we good? All right. So now we're going to have integral 0 to 1, 2 times sine x, which is 2t over 1 plus t squared, cosine x, which is 1 minus t squared, over 1 plus t squared. That's my numerator. And then in the denominator, we had 2 plus cosine x. So that's going to be 2 plus 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And then dx is 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. All right, this one is the spiciest of the substitution integrals that I've done so far. So hang in there. Now let's see what we can clean up. I'm going to take this denominator and you see how we have a 1 plus t squared that our dx contributed. I'm going to distribute it through just to the denominator, mind you, and that'll help clear out that extra denominator down there. I'm going to clean up the numerator in just a second, okay? Just a second. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. 0 to 1. My denominator is going to be, I have 2 times 1 plus t squared. So what is that going to give us? That's going to give us 2 plus 2t two squared plus, and then now when I distribute to the next term, 1 plus t squared cancels. So all I have left is 1 minus t squared down there. Nice. Then let's see, we've got dt, and then I have 2, 2t, and 2. So that's going to give me 8t, yes? Very good. 8t, 1 minus t squared over, and then these are the same, 1 plus t squared twice. So I'm going to write that as 1 plus t squared squared, okay? Lovely. This 1 plus t squared squared can just go into the denominator. And so now we have integral 0 to 1, 8t times 1 minus t squared. I have 1 plus t squared squared. And then let's combine some like terms here. I'm just going to have t squared plus 3. t 
t squared plus 3. Oh, this didn't need to be so excessively long. Let me get a hold of myself. Okay, there we go. And then dt. dt. How are we doing? Okay, so we've cleaned this all up. We don't have an improper fraction anymore, or complex fraction anymore, excuse me. We don't have fractions inside the fraction. And I have a rational function. If I look here, degree of the numerator is 3, degree of the denominator, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. So it's bottom heavy. We can do partial fraction decomposition. If you try to just go straight away as is, it's nightmarish because you have this irreducible quadratic repeated, another irreducible quadratic. And the original setup, I'll write it for you, but we're not going to do it because it's just that grotesque. You would have 8t minus 8t cubed, yes, over... I would write it t squared plus 3, t squared plus 1 squared. And so what you would have to do is set it up as a t plus b over t squared plus 3 plus c t plus d over t squared plus 1 plus e t plus f, e t phone home, over t squared plus 1 squared. And if you try to solve from here, it will be frightening, truly. So <laughs> what's a better way to go about it? It's a little unconventional. You probably haven't done a partial fraction decomp like this before. I'm going to pluck off the 8t and pretend it's not there. Okay. And I'm going to find partial fraction decomp for just 1 minus t squared over the denominator using a little bit of a substitution as well, okay? So we're just gonna consider right now one minus t squared over, uh, let's call it t squared plus one squared and then t squared plus three, okay? Before I find the partial fraction decomp for this, I'm gonna say let's let u equal t squared I'm not doing a u sub in the integral, so I don't need to find du. I'm just using u as a placeholder for t squared so that the decomposition is going to be more manageable. Okay, this is a substitution in the decomposition, not in the integral. And so if I use this substitution, then I'm going to have 1 minus u over, I don't like that it's so crooked. Here we go u plus 1 squared and u plus 3. And you can see this is going to be a much easier decomposition to solve for. So I still have a repeated linear factor here. So I'm going to have a over u plus 1 plus b over u plus 1 squared and then u plus 3. Again, that's just a linear factor. I can have c over u plus 3. Oh my god, this is much less frightening, isn't it? So let's multiply everything through by LCM, LCD, same thing here u plus 1 squared, u plus 3. And then I'm going to have over here 1 minus u equals a times u plus 1, u plus 3, plus b times u plus 3, plus c times u plus 1 squared. Fabulous. I would not multiply everything out. The beauty of about the fact that we need this substitution where we don't have irreducible quadratics is now I can substitute in values for the variable u in this case, and the factors will equal zero, where that wasn't possible earlier. So what do I mean? I'm going to go ahead, let's let u equal negative 1, okay? And then on the left-hand side, 1 minus negative 1, that's going to be 2, equals a times 0, plus b times negative 1 plus 3 is 2, plus c times 0. And then I can see really clearly, okay, b is 1. Look at that. Fab, fab. Then let's go ahead. What else should we try? Let's let u equal negative 3. I'm just picking what's going to make the factors zeros, right? Good. So if u is negative 3, on the left we have 1 minus negative 3, that's 4, equals a times oh, 0, plus b times... Oh, zero, love it, plus c times negative 3 plus 1 squared is 4. So 4 equals 4 times c, so c is 1 also. Now I've run out of things that would make the factors zero. Do you see that? Only negative 3 and negative 1. 
but just pick one more value for you. It'll it'll work. We can find um, A pretty easily. What's a nice number? I say let's let U equal zero. You could do anything, okay? So on the left-hand side, one minus zero, that's one, equals. I know I'm solving for A, okay, and U is zero. So this is gonna be one times three. So I have A times three plus. Now B, I actually know what B is. B is one. And if U is zero, then I have one times three right there. See that? Plus, and then again, we do know what C is. C is one. And then that's just gonna be another one. So one times one squared. All right, so what do we have going on? I have one equals three A plus four. So three A is negative three. So A is negative one. And like I said, you could have chosen anything. You didn't have to use U is zero. Since we already knew the values of B and C, you could solve for the one unknown using any substitution. Just make your life nice. Okay, so we have A, B, and C. What does that mean? I'm going to rewrite now using my decomposition for U. Okay, so we have the following. Um, A was negative 1 over U plus 1 plus B was 1, right, over U plus 1 squared plus, and then C was also 1 over U plus 3. But remember, all of these u's were originally t squared. And then in my integral, do you recall, we just, we left little 8t out of the fun. So we have a decomposition for all of this. And then I'm just going to reintroduce the 8t being multiplied by it. Okay, it's a little peculiar. I probably haven't done one like this before. So now we have integral 0 to 1. Here's 8t, back to party with its friends. And then I have negative 1 over t squared plus 1 plus 1 over t squared plus 1 squared plus 1 over t squared plus 3 dt. Okay, now we can just distribute the 8t through, and then we'll talk about how to deal with each of the terms here, okay? So negative 8t over t squared plus 1 plus 8t over t squared plus 1 squared plus 8t over t squared plus 3 dt. All right, so depending <laughs> where you're at in your math career, you may or may not need to do a u substitution in order to finish off the integral. If you're pretty advanced, you can do these in your head. Um, I wouldn't use U, though, because we like literally just called U T squared. So I don't want to um, be untrue. So if you need to do the substitution, you could say something like, let's let A equal T squared plus 1. And then DA is 2T DT. And 1 half DA is T DT. And that's going to work great as a substitution for this term here, because notice I have T to the first. So t dt. And then you could do a very similar substitution. This is t squared plus 3, not t squared plus 1. But things wouldn't change much. You're still just going to pick up a 1 half. Okay? And then you can do this same sort of substitution here. And realizing since it's squared, the antiderivative would not involve a natural log. You're just going to have this to the negative first with an extra minus sign in the front. So if you need to do that off to the side, go ahead. I'm not going to because this whole problem is a very advanced level. And I figure most of the people watching have U sub on lock. And when I notice the degree of the numerator is one lower than the denominator, I just say, oh, when I find my DT, it's going to give me a 2. So I just need to divide by that 2. And I just, I just keep it pushing. Okay. If you hate that, though, just... Do the U sub off to the side, but break them up. Break them up. Okay, so I'm going to divide by 2. I'm imagining in my head, literally, like this is 1 over A or 1 over U. So I'm going to have negative 4, natural log. I'm not going to put absolute value because T squared plus 1 is never negative. Okay. The next one here, remember, like I said, this is to the negative second power. If I add 1 and divide by the new exponent, it's going to be to the negative first. 
So I'm going to have a minus 4 over t squared plus 1. And then the last term, very similar, it's going to be plus 4 natural log t squared plus 3. Again, I don't need absolute value because t squared plus 3 isn't negative. And then we're going from 0 to 1. So disclaimer, um, you can do substitutions aside if needed here. Okay, depending on where you're at. No shame. Now we're going to substitute in our limits of integration. So let's see, what do we got? Negative 4 ln of 2 minus 4 over 2 plus 4 ln of 4, that's the upper limit, minus the lower limit, negative 4 ln of 1 minus just 4, right? Uh, plus 4 ln of 3. Okay, what does this give me? Negative 4 ln of 2 minus 2 plus 4 ln of 4. This is ln of 1, so that's 0. Goodbye. Plus 4 minus 4 ln of 3. What can we do? So here's 4 minus 2. That's 2. And then you see how all of these uh, natural logs, I can factor out a 4 from them. So let me go ahead and do it. I'm going to put the positive one first. ln of 4 minus ln of 2 minus ln of 3. And then I can combine these into a single logarithm. So this is 2 plus 4 ln 4 over the negative logarithms. Those arguments go in the denominator, 2 times 3. So that's 4 over 6. That reduces to 2 thirds. So this is 2 plus 4 natural log 2 thirds, and we're done. Did you get it? Could you do it on your own? Let me know down below how you solved it. And hey, I'm not saying you have to let t equal tan x over 2. There may be other ways. That's the beautiful thing about math. So if you tried something else, let me know. Since I had just done the video on that substitution, though, I wanted to solve several integrals using that substitution technique just to show you how it works and whatnot. Okay, and I thought this one was fun too because that partial fraction decomp was a little different, which is always exciting. So give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already. I would so appreciate it. And you can also check out the rest of my video lectures that are organized into playlists if you need help with integration or anything else having to do with calculus. I have a lesson, a video for every section in Calc 1, 2, and 3. Pre-calc too, trig. Uh, algebra's incomplete, but it's pretty good. And you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. Thank you so much for your support. I love you all, and I will be back sooner than later. Bye.